The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Now let me just say from the very get-go, there is no way that anybody here can obey God without leaning on God to do that. Apart from Him, you can do nothing. So it's not going to do any good for you to hear me and say, that's it, bless God, I'm just going to go home and I'm going to, I'm going to this and I'm going to that and I'm going to change this and I'm going to change that. Well, truthfully, you will just fail miserably because God does not care one iota for independence. He wants us to be dependent on Him. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due time He might exalt you. And to be humble means that we know that apart from Him, we are nothing. On the other hand, if we don't have a strong desire and a strong determination to obey God, then we're not ever going to. God's not going to do everything for us, and we're not going to do anything without Him. People complain about their time all the time. You know what you do with your time? You do with your time exactly what you want to do with your time. I, don't have, I just don't have enough time. You've got as much as everybody else does. <laughs> we all get the same amount. Why are some people just practically almost useless when it comes to bearing fruit? And then there's other people who are doing astounding, amazing things. And they, they have these unbelievably fruit-bearing lives when both people have the same amount of time. One person wants to do something with their life, and they're willing to pay the price to do it. Somebody say, pay the, pay the price. They're willing to pay the price to do it, while other people just kind of want everything easy. It's too hard. It's not comfortable. I got a bondage in this area. Ooh, help me, Jesus, today. <laughs> Romans 12, 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and I beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies. So Paul is saying, I'm begging you to make a decision. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing here this weekend in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I am begging you and all the people that are going to be watching this around the world by TV, I am begging you to make a decision that you're not going to live a mediocre, half-baked, sloppy life. The first thing that we could all benefit from would be if we decided today, I am done with excuses. I'm not going to make any more excuses. If I can't do anything else, at least I can take responsibility for my mess. Well, it's not my fault. If I wouldn't have been this, and if I wouldn't have been that, and if I would have had more of this and more of that, stop looking at what you don't have and look at what you do have. Maybe you didn't have parents that love you, but you've got God on your side now. Maybe you were abused in your childhood, but God is ready to heal and restore you. Amen? I had a beautiful little thing happen to me this week. It, God amazes me, just amazes me. I graduated from high school in 1961, and my father, of course, was very mean and abusive, and he would not let me do anything the other kids did, and I didn't have any friends. I was always embarrassed and feeling like the odd guy out and he wouldn't buy my class pictures which you know if you remember being in school that was an important thing to kids everybody was like you know trading pictures and I didn't have any and he wouldn't buy my class ring so I didn't get to have a class ring and uh, this past week a box comes to the office and somebody anonymously which I think that's cool because then it just looks like it's all God. <laughs> However, we do know that God uses people. Somebody got into the files at the school where I graduated, found out what year I graduated, my maiden name, and had me a class ring made and sent it to me.
Only on my class ring, I've got a Bible and a little cross. 51 years after I graduated from high school, God is still redeeming what the devil tried to take. How amazing is our God? So we need to always look at what God can do, not just what has been done to us. But how many of you realize today that everything that God tells us to do or not to do that's written in this book is for our good? I said last night, and I want you to get this, our obedience doesn't change anything for God. It's not going to make his life better. Yes, it will increase the kingdom if we contribute to God, but you know, here's the bottom line truth. If you won't let God use you, he will find somebody. I mean, God is not going to be unable to do anything because we refuse to obey. He will find somebody. If he has to look to a thousand people, he'll find somebody to do the very thing that he's asking you to do that maybe you haven't been willing to do. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the odd guy out. I want to be involved in everything that God's doing in the earth today. I want to be part of what God is doing. I don't want to waste my life. Obedience. Another example, when God was first calling me to teach, I had three children at the time, now I have four. And I didn't have any time to study or prepare for ministry, and I, I thought I was crazy anyway, even thinking I'd ever be in ministry, but I had this desire in my heart, and, and I was just teaching one home Bible study, but I had such a desire to study, and Dave worked full-time, I worked full-time, I had a very good job, all my gasoline was paid for by the company, and we didn't have any kind of money struggles, no you know, we weren't just filthy rich, but we had our needs met. We had, you know, we could do what we wanted to do. And God began to deal with me to quit my job, to trust him for finances, and to be at home so I could begin to really study the word and prepare, prepare for this ministry that I thought that I was going to have someday. And so then part of me was saying, you're nuts, and the other part is saying, you know, go for it. So I'm having God speak to me in my spirit and the devil's pounding on my head. Does anybody know where I'm at when I'm talking about that? That's why if you're going to be led by the spirit, you're going to have to take some risks. You're going to have to take a chance on being wrong sometimes to, to find out if you're right. You got to be bold and courageous. When I look back now and realize what I did and how unpopular it was, I'm actually totally amazed that I had the courage to do it. And I know that it was God's grace on my life. And if I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't be here today telling you my story and being able to help you. When I started teaching the word, it was very unpopular for women to do what I'm doing. Everybody thought I'd completely lost my mind except for a handful of people. And I mean, I could count them on one hand. So when God began to deal with me to quit my job, I was afraid to quit my job because we were not going to have enough money to pay our bills. Every month we were going to be $40 short of having enough money to pay our bills, which meant I was going to really, really have to trust God. <laughs> and I'm not recommending that you go try this. This is not something that you just try to do. You would only do something like this if you really, with all your heart, believed it was something God was telling you to do. And the thing you got to realize is what God orders, he pays for. So we never had to pay a bill late. God did do miracles, and every month he gave us what we needed to pay our bills. It was always at the last minute. But you know what? He used that to teach us how to trust him for money. So now what we need today to support this ministry is not frightening to us or a struggle for us because our faith was built way, way, way back 30-some-odd years ago. But the first thing I did was not, oh, yes, Lord, and go quit my job. First of all, I kept my job for a long time until I got so miserable I couldn't stand it. Then, then, I quit my job and got a part-time job. It's so indicative of what I'm talking about here. I was trusting God, doing what God told me to. I was going to have a couple days a week that I could study, but I was still going to have enough money to take care of myself. <laughs> I wasn't going to have to completely trust God. <laughs> now, if I would have stepped out and done that and... After three months, we had bill collectors chasing us. Then I would have had to have been smart enough to say, well, you know what? What I thought I heard wasn't God. 
You got to understand that if you really believe that God is leading you to do something, then God is going to take care of what needs to be taken care of. And if he doesn't, then you need to just man up or woman up and say, you know what? I thought I heard from God. I didn't. There's no shame in that. The way you learn how to hear from God is by stepping out and finding out. But in my case, it really was God. So I got a part-time job. And lo and behold, I got fired from my part-time job. <laughs> now, I was not the kind of employee who got fired. I was a good employee. And I got fired from my job. I mean, every time I, I, I ran a bookkeeping machine back then, and every time I'd touch the silly thing, it would break down. I think they got to thinking I was coming in and doing something to it. <laughs> well, it became very obvious to me that God was saying, I told you <laughs> that I don't want you out in the workforce trying to take care of yourself. I want you studying and preparing by faith for what I have called you to do. Do you know how many years of preparation that I put in with no evidence at all that I would ever stand here? How many hundreds and thousands of hours I sat on my couch at my kids' nap times studying the Word of God? And how many times I stayed up at night studying the Word of God, trying to get any little time with God that I could to teach one weekly, one-hour Bible study in my living room floor with 25 people. And I was faithful to that for five years. Then I worked in somebody else's ministry for five years. And then finally God said, now I want you to take your ministry, go north, south, east, and west. Well, that's nice, God, but nobody knows me, north, south, east, or west. <laughs> I was so scared, I don't even know how to tell you how scared I was. I mean, I was so scared, my knees felt like they were going to cave in under me. So I live in St. Louis, and so we went to north St. Louis, east St. Louis, west St. Louis, and south St. Louis. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth, and I had a, a monthly meeting. I had a meeting each month in each end of town. Because all I knew was to just offer some kind of childlike obedience and see what worked. Well, then we were on one radio station, so then we went on eight radio stations. And, and then a couple of those did good, and so we were able to start going to those cities and renting little hotel ballrooms that would hold 100, 200 people and have meetings. I've done this thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times. I've picked up chicken legs off the floor from the banquet the night before so we could set our chairs up. I remember when Dave and I would drive a van with bald tires and he would unload all of back then, it was the teaching tapes. He would unload them, set them up, he'd sell them all. I had one musician and he could sing, play a guitar, play a piano, and he played a drum machine with his foot. Thirty-five years. So don't you dare <laughs> even ever attempt to judge and criticize me because you do not have any idea. <laughs> I've gotten to the point when I get silly letters, letters of criticism, I just, it's just like, I laugh. It's like, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but see, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this because of the things that God's dealing with you about. And rather, it's God saying to you, lose the bad attitude. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Start tithing. I didn't think everybody would clap for that. <laughs> Do you know 20% of the people give all the money? That ain't right. Another 20, same 20% do all the work. That's not right either. <laughs> and we just said, well, I wish I had. I wish I had. I didn't get it wishing. 